Germany says the issue of reparation is closed. That's after Poland demanded more than a trillion dollars for Nazi crimes during World War II. But why is Warsaw making this move now? Is politics involved? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I am Hashem Ahalbara. Poland says it will demand $1.3 trillion from Germany for crimes committed during the Second World War. The figure follows the release of a report on the cost of the Nazi occupations of Poland from 1939 to 1945. Poland's right-wing government says the country has not been fully compensated, but Germany insists compensation was paid in the years that followed the war and the matter is now closed. We have a lot to discuss with our guests shortly. First, this report from Dominic Hain in Berlin. When German forces attacked Poland in 1939, Adolf Hitler said he was righting historic wrongs done to his country. The war he started would leave the continent in ruins and kill tens of millions of people. Few suffered more than the Poles. One in six of them died under German occupation. Nearly two-thirds of their industry was destroyed. More than three-quarters of their infrastructure was ruined. Now, the modern Polish state believes the modern German state should pay. 1.3 trillion euros is a very serious sum, but considering payment of this kind of compensation is spread over decades, it's a sum the German economy can perfectly overcome without being crushed. The compensation paid to France for the First World War damages stopped only 10 years ago, so this sum is quite realistic. But not to modern German eyes. Successive governments have said a deal in 1953 between the communist governments in Warsaw and Berlin waived Poland's claim for compensation. The present Polish government says its predecessor was forced by the Soviets to make the offer and so it should not count. In one sense, Germany has already lost much. Around a quarter of its territory was annexed by the USSR and Poland after the war. Millions of people who had lived there were evicted. And accepting the loss of this territory was key to bringing about German reunification after the Cold War. There are some who say the current Polish government may be using the reparations argument to make political capital at home. Something like 83% of their supporters want this to happen. Elections are coming up next year. And having run out of other issues um, and definitely wanting to distract from inflation, um, fuel shortages and other problems that Poland is facing. In recent times, democratic Germany has tried hard to right the wrongs done by Nazi Germany, building monuments to the many millions who were murdered, and expressing determination never to repeat the sins of the past, but also arguing that the time for compensating the countries that were invaded and occupied is over. Dominic Cain, Al Jazeera, Berlin. Let's bring in our guests in Warsaw, Michael Racon, and anchor at the Polish TV news channels, TVP Info and TVP World. In Berlin, Ulrich Bruckner, professor of political science at Stanford University. And in London, Maximilian Haas, fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. Welcome to the program. Michael, is this a genuine attempt by the Polish government to seek justice, or is it just a politically motivated push by the Law and Justice Party? Well, you have to be aware that uh, in Poland, uh, the memories of the Second World War uh, are so embedded into the, uh, our common uh, understanding of reality that we are right now, that actually it's very hard to find a single family in Poland that haven't been uh, directly touched by the horrors and uh, the, the tragedy of the Second World War. Uh, basically, uh, almost 40 million people right now have their, uh, have their uh, grandparents fighting the Second World War, or actually 
most of all being a victims of the Second World War in some way. Uh, actually, it's very hard, hard to find a family that uh, had uh, no uh, financial losses, that didn't lose its, uh, I don't know, homes, their uh, locations, the people were murdered. This is a thing that is so embedded into our uh, a common understanding of the of the history and everyday life that uh, this is general uh, public expectation for years mm -hmm. that uh, uh, those atrocities uh, are going to be uh, faced, named, uh, and uh, in a way compensated. Ulrich, but then when uh, in in Germany the general sentiment among the people and the establishment is that this is a right wing government which is weaponizing legacy of the past to try to put more pressure on the German government. How do you see the German government moving forward? Well, the German government has immediately responded and it was very calm and straightforward, referring to the legal side of the story, which is that everything is settled and this is not something that is even legally put on the international agenda. No one has any doubts about the German responsibility and the guilt and the tragedy that Germans caused in Poland. But the general sentiment in Germany is also among the other members of the European Union that we don't do politics with history. Maximilian, the timing of the, of the, uh, of the, of the reparation issue is pushing many to think that the uh, Law and Justice Party is tapping into that particular anti-German sentiment to advance its own political agenda, knowing that there's absolutely no way they can get any concessions from the Germans. Well, um, yes, the uh, government has to tie EU budgetary funds closer to uh, rule of law decisions within the European Union. This has, of course, uh, been a particular bone of contention between Germany and Poland for the last six years with Germany alongside most of the institutions in Brussels finding that the ruling government in Poland, the Law and Justice Party's reform of the legal system, the judicial system, and in particular the Supreme Court, uh, has violated those European standards. We've similarly seen these kind of disputes over German reparations come at other times of such tensions, including in 2017, which was originally the genesis of this report here now, as well as in German-Greek relations uh, at points where Germany and Athens have disagreed uh, over European policy. So there certainly is background in more recent history, which has caused some of that uh, poor faith about these claims uh, within Germany and um, amongst critics of the um, Polish government. Michael, I, I, as you've heard, the, the, the Germans are adamant. This is a closed matter. They have paid compensation right after the war. Not only that, they're saying that the, 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 the Polish have themselves taken some of the territory from Germany right after the war. So this is already settled. No, that's obviously not uh, true, but uh, the main important, the most important issue here uh, is uh, uh, the, not the, even the, the matter of the, of the legal framework, which is, uh, which is open for discussion. And actually, uh, you cannot uh, state that uh, Polish, uh, that Poland as a country, as a sovereign state, existed in 1953. It was not a sovereign state, and the reason for which Poland was not a sovereign state in 1953 was German and Russian common aggression against Poland, the Second World War. You have to remember that for the first two years, Poland uh, was uh, actually occupied by two countries, by Soviet Union and uh, the Third Reich, and the reason for which Poland, uh, actually the state of Poland that was under Russian control, made the claim in 1953 that was, uh, uh, that was actually that the German government is talking about constantly for those years was made actually by the Soviet Union. And the fact is I actually oppose the claiming that this is doing a politics with a history. This is not true. Uh, the fact is that those uh, moral, the moral responsibility which, uh, which my, uh, my, my partners here are uh, claiming is obvious, and I agree it's obvious, wasn't followed by the compensation uh, of the loss of uh, millions of lives here. I got a report here, actually one of those uh, three books. This is a report that was produced by a group of, uh, uh, of scientists, uh, people who weren't affiliated into any political uh, party that, was, that were working for years 
to assess the level of compensation required. You have to be aware that nowadays in the German banks, there are accounts that were found by the scholars who uh, arranged this and worked on this uh, issue that were collected from Poland. Uh, to make this uh, thing even more complicated or simpler in mm -hmm. a way, is that also the German scholars uh, are claiming that this is not a claim from Poland, but this is a, uh, this is a debt that um, debt that should be paid by the uh, Germans. If you listen to uh, to professors uh, that, that wrote books on the issues of the reparations uh, for Greece and for Poland, it is stated quite obviously. So this case is not closed. Okay. Uh, and Poland was not a sovereign country when it claimed that it is waiving its, uh, its claims in 1953. Ulrich, why is it difficult for both nations to move forward, turn the chapter of a long history of animosity, talking about the defeat of the Teutonic uh, Order, the Prussia's ro role in the splitting of the uh, Lithuanian-Polish uh, uh, Commonwealth, and do exactly what the Germans and the French managed to do, which is basically turning up a chapter and starting a new one. I think the main difference between the successful reconciliation between Germany and France and the not so successful reconciliation between Poland and Germany, yesterday we heard that there is no such thing like reconciliation until Germany pays a gigantic amount of money. That was the statement of the leader of the peace. The main difference is that we have different starting conditions. Poland tells its story as a story of being a victim between Russia and Prussia, Nazi Germany or Germany in the European Union. This is an essential narrative that helps especially conservative well, governments. Well, professor, those are obvious facts. Poland was attacked on the 1st of uh, uh, September 1939 yes. by Germany. It, it wasn't yes. a, a provoked attack. So, uh, it was an so atrocity. And six million history. lives so were lost. There is a shared history with France. And in the case of France, we decided that we should close the chapter and start a new European order based on the mutual interest in we should have a common future. And Dear Professor, while this discussion was among it, France it. and Germany, Poland was imprisoned in the Russian Soviet uh, prison. We were victims of this war and we were for 50 years under the communism regime. And the reason for which that happened was common attack on Poland by Russia and Germany. Okay. And no one no. ever compensated this realize. to the Polish people, I, to my family, to, break, I, to, to brother I of my of my late uh, grandfather to oh. the people who were in the concentration camps. They were I, never compensated I, I for this. I don't think that there is anybody who denies that responsibility. I say both uh, as somebody of German descent who also had families who died in the Polish concentration camps. It is clear that Germany the has Polish a moral concert, guilt. Come on, and I think excuse there, me, there Polish concentration camps? No, I, no, 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 I, no, no, no. The, 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 the phrase Polish concentration, concentration camps that were located camp, on Polish territory. No, I, concentration um, camps, German they were, they were concentration on camps Polish on the territory, the territory this, that was they, occupied they, by German. It, Germany. If you don't mind. No, 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 yeah. no. It is yeah, one of the uh, most important and fundamental things. No, there I, were agree with, no I agree with Polish you concentration camps. camps. Those were no German. No, 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 no. There were, were Nazi German concentration camps concentration. in Poland. German Nazi, no, not I, in Poland. I, I, I agree there with you German on this point. concentration camps because Poland did not exist because it was occupied by Germany and by Russia. Uh, that, 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 yes, that, it that, certainly was. That very exchange part of itself the problem is, however, is an indication of the very complex nature of this. I, I, I'll give you a chance to, yes. to finish what you've been saying, uh, Maximilian, if you don't mind, before we're moving forward to another angle of the story. Yes, I, I agree there is a very complex history, and I certainly don't deny both the German and the Nazi guilt for crimes that they carried out on Polish occupied territory. That being said, I think part of the problem with the issue today is that how complex these are 
these claims are and the issues of how the best way to solve them is and to move forward in a European project. The a fundamental underlying issue relates to state claims against one another. The original claim in 1953 was, yes, between a communist uh, government controlled by Moscow in Poland and a communist government in eastern Germany, also heavily influenced uh, by Moscow. But to, mm -hmm. there were certainly crimes that continued in that era as well. There was the forced movement of Germans out of uh, cities in, in the territory that is now Poland. I don't think demanding reparations at times of other European tensions when very real war going on being waged by Russia in Ukraine is helpful for ensuring the common European defense going okay. forward. And because these legal issues are so complex, it's simply impossible to deal with. Michael, just no, for, 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 no, the, for the sake are... for our international audience, Maximilian was talking about the six million Poles who were uh, killed, including three million uh, uh, Polish Jews and uh, they are citizens of Republic of Poland, and Poland does not differ uh, 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 by their origin or by their ethnic uh, background. Uh, and this this Those brings me citizens of okay. Republic of uh, Poland killed by the German uh, occupying uh, forces. But I want to address one one more point. Briefly, which is if you don't also, mind, yes. Briefly, of course, which is also a very important thing, and it's also an indication of the level of complication of those issues. The fact that uh, the certain uh, number of, of um, German citizens uh, had to move from the territories that were granted to Poland after the Second World War was a decision of the Allies during the uh, conference in Tehran, and it pushed them. Those were the decisions of the Allies after the Second World War, and they made another decision during those conferences that Poland is uh, going to get reparations for from Germany and it did not receive it until today. This is a moral issue. Okay. This is the issue of responsibility on, of compensation to the uh, uh, so, to the victims or the family. Oh, Rick, the I would like to ask you this. Are we talking here about uh, an I uh, a dispute which is going to fade away one day or are we talking about something that has the potential to undermine the 1991 uh, uh, treaty between Poland and uh, Germany, the Treaty of Good Neighbourship? Well, as we have already distinguished, there is a moral dimension, there is a historical dimension about the facts that are not sufficiently known in Germany. Therefore, I warmly welcome the fact that these three volumes that we have been seeing before are stimulating the discussion and the historical learning in Germany. This is warmly welcome. But there's also a political instrumentalization of this that is part of the election campaign of the Peace Party that will no, but use what, whatever comes sir, but to what Germany. But what are the bases on which you are claiming when you are putting I, I, the, the I, thing of those... I appreciate, the Michael, if you just give him a chance to finish and then I can, I can, I can come back to you if you don't mind. Go ahead, go ahead, Ulrich. Okay, sure. Sure. In our conversation. This is a very heated and emotional discussion that will always pop up whenever a populist tries to instrumentalize this. So this will never go no. away because this is a choker that you can always play when you have a situation like you isolate yourself in the European family of nation states with your radical position in your interpretation of what the rule of law and so democracy is. You, you are talking about the interpretation of the facts and you're talking about the populists while you are uh, uh, talking about the victims of the war that was waged and what, which was provoked by the uh, German nation and was never paid for those uh, victims of those uh, of those crimes and i'm a, uh, i'm a, i'm a grandson of a, of a man who was uh, who was one of those uh, victims the grandmother of my wife was in a concentration uh, camp for two years uh, forced to uh, check <laughs> if the weapons if the bullets for the german weapons are properly uh, prepared. Those people were never compensated for the crimes. And you are talking about the election proce the, process. You are claiming that those are the populist uh, uh, claims, which is basically, uh, well, you shouldn't do it. You should uh, okay. uh, take a look at the moral Michael. and financial responsibility related to this I, I, moral responsibility. Maximilian, I have a question to ask you, if you don't mind. Do you think this is this yeah. similar discontent Please. took a different uh, direction, particularly with Russia's invasion of uh, Ukraine. If you remember back then, the first uh, response from Poland was 
basically very dismissive and critical of Germany, saying that their, their role has been too late, too slow when it comes to helping the Ukrainians. There has been a lot of criticism from uh, Poland and many other corners on the German government's response, and I share a lot of that criticism, and I think it's time for Berlin to show some leadership uh, on that side. But this issue, I don't think, is, is ultimately connected to the issue uh, mm -hmm. in Ukraine, which, of course, also after the war changed the borders in the east of Poland. I think it's really connected more likely to these internal European disputes we've been talking about. As to the point of whether it's being politicized, I would just point to the fact that it tends to come up during times of tension uh, between the uh, PIS, the law and justice government in Poland uh, and Brussels and EU, whether that was in 2016, 2017, or back in 2004, uh, when Lech Kaczynski, the leader of the party, uh, first um, brought up a similar commission. Um, so I do think it's that there. And, you know, that being said, on the historical and the moral points, it is incredibly complicated, and there is undoubtedly a, a German guild. But there have also been issues with Jewish uh, people who, um, receiving compensation from the Polish government over uh, the territory the that they Polish lost government? at the end of the world war. Excuse me, sir. So, Excuse me, sir. Yeah. But let, let me put one thing, because you might not be familiar with Michael. that. It was, it, was, it was announced yesterday that Poland actually welcomed the citizens uh, uh, of, um, of Israel and the state of uh, Israel to join this uh, claim uh, because of the claims that uh, should be addressed to the perpetrators of the Second World War, the Germany. Basically, so Germany is the um, is, is the perpetrator and should be um, uh, the, uh, the address that all the uh, claims uh, from former uh, citizens of Republic of Poland uh, should be sent okay. to. And it was actually said yesterday. One more final thing: mm -hmm. in 2004, all Polish political parties, 2004, all political parties in Poland uh, voted for a bill, and this bill. Uh, stated clearly that Polish government should prepare this document, this kind of document, and address the issue with the relations uh, straight to okay. the German government. So right. it wasn't made by the PIS party because PIS party wasn't the ruling party back in 2004. Oh, Rick, now you have... Uh, this is an extraordinary moment for both Olaf Scholz and also for Matthias Morawiecki uh, of... Uh, Poland, do you think that ultimately they will have to move forward for them to be able to maintain what they have managed to achieve over the past uh, two decades, particularly building strong economic and financial relations? Well, I wish they find a common denominator to move on, although the different positions, not only on this case, but also in a number of others, make it relatively unlikely. And this is a pity given the situation that there is war in Europe. And what matters the most at the moment is that the West stands united. And whether this is possible in a situation in which a single country plays blame game like this at this very moment mm -hmm. remains to be seen. Maximilian, there is the legacy of the second wall where there, uh, there world are war two countries and the atrocities that were committed responsible for the Second World War. Then there is also the what many people think is right-wing political parties in Europe weaponizing the anti-German sentiment to build some sort of an anti-German alliance within the EU. Do you see it that way? Uh, I don't see it that way. You know, I, I, I do think that this is, there is a politicization to, to the timing of this issue. Uh, but as we were saying, I very much welcome uh, debate and discussion both within Germany and wider Europe about the, the history of this time and showing uh, the, the Nazi crimes that were committed both within Germany and uh, in occupied Polish territory and further abroad. But on that sort of right wing front, um, within Europe that we're seeing right now, we've actually seen a pretty big divide emerge between the Polish government and the far right wing government of Viktor Orban in Hungary uh, over his relative the accepting approach of Russia's crimes in uh, Ukraine and even going to Moscow today mm -hmm. uh, and buying more gas from Gazprom. So we've seen a real difference in, in, in between Thank those you. two countries that I think is fundamentally undermine that alliance. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we really have to leave it there because we're running out of time. In the meantime, Michael Rakon... One, one, one Ulrich, thing Rokner, I just Maximilian have to say, that Germany made a financial deals with Russia, and the reason for which we see this clash in, in Europe between different mm -hmm. uh, political groups uh, is the 
policy that people oppose in many countries. We do not agree in many uh, the, the countries to, to, to make Europe a, a federation. Thank to, you, Michael. To, 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 to dismantle the, the sovereign states. Thank you. Lots of people do not agree Thank on you. this. I promise you that we will revisit this uh, topic in the near future here on Inside Story. I really appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashim Ahbala, and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.